Welcome to the video lecture of 19 SCPHY U301. I will switch off my webcam now so that you can focus on the presentation. In last video lecture, we have had an overview of the whole syllabus for this course. In this lecture now we will begin with the first chapter which is complex numbers. Uh, so this is the lecture plan. Initially we will see the references that I am using to prepare these video lectures. Then we will go through a brief history of how complex numbers came into the picture. Later we will see quadratic equations. We, we are particularly focusing on quadratic equations because when you try to find out the roots of quadratic equation, many times you have to use complex numbers or in fact without complex numbers it is not possible to have roots of all the quadratic equations. So we will see how to find out roots of quadratic equation and then finding out the quadratic equation given the roots of the quadratic equation. So these are the references that I am using. First two books, Mathematical Methods in Physics by Mary Boas and a book by Arfkane, Weber and Harris. These two books are useful for the whole course. All of the topics that we have in this course are covered in these two books. The third book by Brown and Churchill on complex variables and their applications is treatise on the topic of complex numbers. In this course, we will be only covering the first chapter from this book. Then the fourth reference is from Shaw Model Outline series. In this reference, you can find out a number of solved and unsolved problems on complex number. Again, we will be only considering the first chapter from this book. And finally, you can see a URL there. Most of the history that I am covering in this video lecture is taken from this fifth. You can find out the PDF file on the given URL. So we will now start discussing the brief history of complex numbers. We will discuss this on this timeline. You can see the blue timeline on the screen. In 8th century, Al Khwarizmi developed the algebra. Some of you may be wondering why we are discussing algebra in this topic, topic of complex number. The reason is complex numbers were invented to find out the roots of polynomials, cubic polynomials to be specific. In 13th century, Leonardo of Pisa introduced algebra in Italy and he then started solving quadratic equations. Then in 16th century, Cardano first wrote down the complex number in this form square root of minus r. r here is any real number. The reason was many times when you find out the roots, you get numbers like this. Now mathematicians till then used to simply discard this second part which is square root of minus 1. The reason being you cannot have any real number which is square root of minus of some real number and therefore this second part was completely discarded from the solution of quadratic equation but Cardano first started keeping that square root of negative part as it is. Then Bombelli first introduced the notion of square root of minus 1. He used to write a word in Latin for that which starts with alphabet I and therefore we also today use i for writing down square root of minus 1. So with this notation because of Bombelli what happened was when you want to write down square root of minus 5 now that can be simplified as follows you can write this number as minus 5 I'm sorry you can write this number as 5 into square root of minus 1 this then can be written as square root of minus 1 into square root of 5 now square root of minus 1 is written as another number we use i for that today and square root of 5 now is a real number. So Bompelli first introduced this notion for square root of minus 1. Later in 18th century Euler started writing down i for square root of minus 1 unlike Bombelli who used the word in Latin. Euler also started using the geometry of complex numbers in the plane. 
and he also derived the formula which we will also discuss in this chapter finally gauss he developed the geometrical interpretation of complex number and later cauchy was responsible for starting a functional theory of complex number which eventually led to complex analysis let's now have a quick review of what polynomials are and then we will focus on special kind of polynomials which are quadratic equation an equation of this form a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube plus there may be some more terms and the last term in this series is an x raised to n where n here is an integer then this series is called as a polynomial let's now define a few terms related with the polynomials all these a's a0 a1 a2 and in this case we have n number of these constants they are all called as coefficients of the polynomial for example here a2x square since x is raised to 2 a2 is called as coefficient of second power of x and x of course is the variable which varies in the in the given range now degree of polynomial is the highest power with non zero coefficient let's consider a few examples suppose i have a polynomial like this 4 plus 3x square plus x raised to 4 what is the degree of this polynomial the degree of the polynomial is 4 the reason is though we don't have this term here which is x raised to 3 the highest power of x is 4 with non zero coefficient and therefore the polynomial this is polynomial of degree 4 this is written as p4 of x sometimes this means it is it has degree 4 and it is polynomial in x similarly let's consider another example 1 plus 2x square plus 5x cube plus 0 into x raised to 4 what is the degree of the polynomial now of course it is 3 why because this term is non-existent since the coefficient of x raised to 4 is 0 that term is not there it is as good as it is not there and therefore this polynomial has degree 3 now the quadratic equations are polynomial of degree 2 so a quadratic equation is of this form a0 plus a1x plus a2x square so this is a polynomial of second degree and whenever you equate this to 0 then you call that this is a quadratic equation many times instead of using this a0 a1 and a2 since now we know that there are only three constants it is written as a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 so a here is coefficient of x square b is coefficient of x and c is the constant which is coefficient of x raised to 0 so whenever you see this kind of equation it is called, called as the quadratic equation let's now discuss the roots of quadratic equation here you can see a quadratic equation on the screen this if i want to write in this term a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 then a for the given quadratic equation is 1 b is equal to minus 1 and c is equal to minus 6 so this is a polynomial and what we are interested in are the roots of this polynomial so what are the roots of the polynomial whenever this equation is satisfied or whenever the value of x is such that this left hand side of the equation is equal to 0 and then you say that the equation is satisfied then it those values of x are called as roots of the polynomial for example this is a graph please note in this graph that this is the x axis this is the y axis and this is the origin so this is a graph of this left hand side of this quadratic equation so 
basically if you vary value of x from minus 5 this is minus 5 to plus 5 then you get a graph like this root is when the left hand side is equal to right hand side or whenever this graph of left hand side intersects with x axis when the value becomes 0 then these points are called as the roots of the given polynomial so for this case these two points are the roots of the poly of the quadratic equation one is minus 2 the other one is plus 3 now one way to find roots of the quadratic equation is by considering the factors for example in in this equation x square minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 we can fi find out the factor and write this equation as x minus 3 x plus 2 and this is equal to 0 and therefore root will be x is equal to 3 and x is equal to minus 2 so this is of course a one way to find out the root of, roots of quadratic equation but many quadratic equations when their coefficients are not simple enough to find out the roots then this method of factorization may not be of help so however there is however there is formula for finding out the roots of any given quadratic equation suppose your quadratic equation is a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 then roots of this quadratic equation is given by x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 a so all you need to do is plug in values of these coefficients in this equation and you will have two roots the first root is minus b plus square root of b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 a and the second root x2 is minus b minus b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 a now you can see here in this equation in these roots if you consider these particular terms what we have is square root of b square minus 4 ac now a quadratic equation may have different coefficients their values are independent of each other and it may happen that b square actually is less than 4 ac and therefore what will happen is this this term in the square root will become b square minus 4 ac so this term will become negative it will be less than 0 because b square is greater than 4 ac and then you get into trouble you cannot have a real solution or real roots of quadratic equation and this is the reason why or this is the reason how complex number came into picture now we will use our formula to find out roots of this equation this per given quadratic equation has real roots let's try to figure out again this here you can see the graph of left hand side of the quadratic equation this is x axis this is y axis and the graph intersects x axis at these two points so these two are the roots of this quadratic equation this is minus 2 and this is plus 3 one way as as i said is to factorize the equation in this case it is not going to be very difficult but it may happen that the coefficients are not simple enough to factorize the equation and therefore for sake of demonstration we will use the formula that we have just written so a quadratic equation in general is of this form for given quadratic equation a is equal to 1 b is equal to minus 1 and c is equal to minus 6 and the form the roots of the quadratic equation are given by x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 so here now we will plug in the values of the coefficients so this b is equal to minus 1 so 1 plus or minus square root of b square is 1 minus 4 ac is 4 into 1 into c so this is plus 24 
and this is divided by 2. So the two roots are now x1, which is the first root, is a1 plus square root of 25, which is 5 divided by 2. So x1 is equal to 3, which is the first root, which we can see here. The second root x2 is 1 minus 5 divided by 2. So x2 therefore is equal to minus 2, which is this root. So this is an example where we have the real roots for quadratic equation. Now let's consider another example of quadratic equation. Let's consider this quadratic e equation x square minus 4x plus 6. So a here is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 4 and c is equal to 6. Now this graph here is the left hand side of the polynomial plotted against x. You can see here that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and the curve never touches the x-axis in this case. That means there are no real roots to this quadratic equation but there is a theorem in mathematics which says that any polynomial of nth order has n number of roots. So if you consider the quadratic equation it is polynomial of second order so there should be two roots in this case though there are no real roots we will see that there are two roots which are complex roots so let's try to find out the roots of this quadratic equation x is equal to remember the formula is x is equal to minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so this is going to be x square is equal to 4 plus or minus b square is 16 minus 24 divided by 2. So first root is x1 is equal to 4 plus minus 24 is square root of 8 minus 8 divided by 2 and x2 is going to be 4 minus square root of minus 8 divided by 2. Now we know that we can write down square root of minus 1 as i and therefore x1 here can be written as 1 plus square root of 8 into square root of minus 1 divided by 2 and x2 is 4 plus square root of 8 into square root of minus 1 divided by 2. So this minus 1 here and min square root of minus 1 here can be written as i and when you solve the equation this will turn out to be equal to 2 plus 1.41i and x2 is equal to sorry this is negative 2 minus 1.41i so the roots of this given quadratic equations are x1 which is equal to 2 plus 1.41i and the second root is 2 minus 1.41i. If you compare these two roots now, the real part which doesn't have i in the complex number is 2 which is same for both the roots. The only change that we have is in the sign of the imaginary part 1 on for x1 it is positive for x2 it is negative such numbers for which the real part is same and complex part is reversed in sign are called as complex conjugate of each other and there is an important thing that you should note down when it comes to roots of quadratic equation if a quadratic equation with real coefficients does not have real roots then its roots are complex conjugate of each other which is actually the case in our example. Now we have come to the last topic of this lecture. Suppose we are given roots and we are interested in finding out the quadratic equation. Let's consider an example. Suppose we know that there are these are the two roots of quadratic equation. Let's say 4 and the second root is minus 3 and we want to find out the quadratic equation for which these two are the roots. 
so we know that they are root that means the value of the quadratic equation should be equal to zero for this at these two given points and therefore we should have x minus 4 into x minus minus 3 is equal to 0 because this these are the two roots of quadratic equation therefore this is x minus 4 into x plus 3 is equal to 0 now we can easily get the quadratic quadratic equation by expanding uh, by multiplying these two brackets so what we get is x square minus 4x plus 3x minus 12 is equal to 0 or x square minus x minus 12 is equal to 0. So this is the quadratic equation for which the roots are 4 and minus 3. We can easily check that. Let's now consider another example where the roots are not real but are complex numbers. Suppose the first root is say 1 plus 2i and second root is 1 minus 2i. In this course, we will be considering quadratic equations which are with real coefficients and as we have seen in this statement that whenever we have real coefficients for quadratic equations and if the roots are complex then these roots are complex conjugate of each other which we can see here for z1 real part is 1 and for z2 real part is also 1 so real parts of both these numbers are same as far as the imaginary part is considered for z1 it is plus 2 and for z2 it is minus 2 so imaginary part is also same with a reverse sign and therefore z1 and z2 are complex conjugate of each other and we want to find out the quadratic equation for which these are the roots now these are as these are complex conjugate and therefore we will get a quadratic equation with real coefficients let's try to let's try to find out the equation x i'll write x we will write the quadratic equation in x so x minus 1 plus 2i we will solve we will solve it just like we did the previous example minus 1 minus 2i is equal to 0 therefore this is x minus 1 minus 2i and this is x minus 1 plus 2i. Now to get the quadratic equation we have to multiply these two brackets which gives us x square minus x plus 2ix. This is the first term when you multiply this x to this bracket. Now I will multiply one, minus 1 by this bracket and then I get minus x plus 1 minus 2i. And finally now I will multiply 2i and this bracket which will give me minus 2i x plus 2i minus 4i square is equal to 0. Now we have to simplify this equation to get the quadratic equation. First we will keep this x square as it is then we have let's collect all the terms with x so this is a term with x this is plus 2i this also is x and this is minus 2i so these two terms will get cancelled and then we are left only with these two terms in x so this therefore is minus 2x now let's let's collect all the constant terms with x raised to 0 and then we can see here that this is 1 this is minus 2i plus 2i so they will get cancelled so this is plus 1 and then we have this last term as minus 4i square but we know that i is equal to square root of minus 1 and therefore i square is equal to minus 1 therefore this is nothing but plus 4 so the, the constant we now have to consider is this plus 1 and this is plus 4 so it is plus 5 is equal to 0 so this is the quadratic equation for which these two are the roots as we already guessed that the coefficients of this quadratic equation are all real a here is equal to 1 
d is equal to minus 2 and c is equal to 5. So, in this way you can find out quadratic equation from the given root and that is true for real roots, roots which are complex conjugate of each other giving us the quadratic equation in uh, quadratic equation with uh, real coefficients and this is true in general also for any kind of roots given any roots you can now find out the quadratic equation. To summarize complex numbers were invented in order to find out the roots of polynomials. Any quadratic equation with real coefficients either has real roots or if the roots are not real then both the roots are complex conjugate of each other. That is all for this lecture. If you are officially enrolled for this course, then I encourage you to go to the online portal and solve as many as problems possible and go through the resources which are available uh, on the e-learning portal. Thank you for watching.